sa left daw, yan yung mag-interpret sa mga right. Nawala na yung wala na yung pinag-transition. Okay. So, Luke chapter 20, we already have the final confrontation na ng na ng So yung background natin, yung uh, triumphal entrance, um, ang kwento ng Luke mula sa Galilee, papunta siya sa Jerusalem, at uh, napag-usapan natin last uh, week or last time that we studied, yung Luke chapter 19, nandito na yung tri triumphal entrance. So nakapasok na siya and then uh, there was commotion sa pagpasok niya and the uh, religious leaders are quite worried dahil alam nga natin and explain ko na yung mga uh, Romans are really particular pag uh, merong mga pagtitipon, merong gatherings, medyo nagkakagulo and the Jewish leaders are concerned na baka magalit yung mga Romans and they will thought that it is again another rebellion. So, secondly, ang magkikita din natin sa background is that nagkumasok siya and is being hailed as the Messiah, yung political leader that they were expecting. But at the same time, the Lord Jesus Christ is weeping as he enters and he looks at the temple and he said, you are going to reject me, especially referring to the religious leaders. So, ina-anticipate niya na yung rejection. And uh, after that, he went to the temple and then sinira niya yung mga tindahan at mga money changers doon. And dito tayo papasok na sa kwento ng uh, pagsisira ng Panginoong Yesus. Reading together again, begin. And he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. And he was teaching daily in the temple. The chief priests and the scribes and the principal men of the people were seeking to destroy him, but they did not find anything they could do, for all the people were hanging on his words. So there is really thirst for the Word of God. There is hunger for the Word of God. Sa pagtuturo, ibig sabihin, andun ang seat ng mga religious leaders. They teach every day. They have this exposition of the Word. Pero it's empty. Hindi siya nakasatisfy ng longing, spiritual needs ng mga tao. But then when the Lord Jesus Christ came and started to teach them, and it's fo focusing on the Gospels, on salvation. Do nila na recognize that they really need, there is really a need for the Gospel or the good news. There is no good news coming from the uh, Pharisees and Sadducees teachings. So, sa itong concept na to, one day is Jesus was teaching the people in the temple and preaching the gospel. So, ang pinipreach niya, tinuturo niya was actually the good news. At ito yung walang good news. Kaya sabi kanina ni Pastor, uh, which is consistent actually sa kwento natin dito, na yung mga kulto, walang silang good news. Pagluloko na yung ginagawa nila. And in a way, sa time ng, uh, ni Jesus, ganun din, parang Uh, niloloko lang ng mga religious leaders ang mga tao para lang sila uh, they gain. So, alam natin na especially yung mga seduces, mga politiko sila. And uh, so they want to cling to the power at sila yung mga mayayaman. So, uh, they are in the position sa religion para mag-gain sila, umaman sila. So yun yung proseso. That's why when the Lord Jesus Christ about, speaks about money, two things, if you have money, be worried, okay, be concerned. Number two, if you have money, give it away. Which is really, hindi, hindi yun ka, 
katanggap-tanggap sa mga religious leaders. So, naging question nila, anong pumasok si Jesus dun sa temple, pinagsisiraan niya yung mga <coughs> money changers doon, yung mga nagtitinda na mga sila sacrifice, kinikwestiyon niya yun nila, panunod, anong authority mo? Bakit ginagawa mo yan? And uh, reading together sa uh, uh, let's start yeah, let's start uh, the very beginning. Uh, start. One, One day as Jesus was teaching the people in the temple and preaching the gospel, the chief priests and scribes with the elders came up and said to him, Tell us, by what authority you do these things? And who is it that gave you this authority? He answered them, I will ask you a question. Now tell me, was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? And they discussed it with one another, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why did you not believe him? But if we say from man, all the people who stoned us to death, for they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they answered, and they did not know where they came from. And Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. So, madalas, nagkita natin as we study the gospel, pag tinanong si Jesus, sinasagot niya rin ang tanong. And sabi nga natin, answering questions with questions. By that, actually, is a great method and also a methodology on apologetics. Pag nanonood kayo sa YouTube, dun sa mga Christian apologists, usually, pa yung magtatanong, tinatanong muna, tinatanong din ulit. Either for clarification, para maklarify yung tanong. Pangalawa, to really see kung ano yung purpose ng tanong. At pangatlo, malaman kung ano yung posisyon ng nagtatanong. That's why kung minsan pag nagtatanong, e sa'yo, ano ba dapat ang sagot? So pag nagtatanong, tinatanong, ikaw, ano sa opinion mo? So, ganun yung paninoon sa kanya mga uh, the way that he does things. Especially on discussions and questions and answers. At uh, there is two things lang na magigita natin yung the question of authority. Kasi ang patanong sa kanya, saan galing? Sino ang nagbigay sa iyo ng authority? So, dalawa lang yung option. Uh, more or less, dalawang option. Tao ba o Diyos? Now, the problem of Jesus is that He is neither authorized by man or by God. Kasi sa concept nila, dapat nag-aral ka. Kailangan mo ng pag-aaral para magkaroon ka ng authority. At kailangan i-ordain -ordain ka bago ka mabigyan ng spiritual authority. Ginawa natin kanina, it's some sort of an ordination or recognition of our officers that they are now given authority Monday on the basis of the Word of God. So, ganun din sa kay Jesus. So, anong authority mo? Hindi ka naman nag-aral. Wala ka namang rabi, rabbinical school na masasabi mo may titulo ka, may diploma ka ba, may certificate ka ba. Sino ba yung tutor mo? Madalas kasi kailangan, you have to state who is your tutor. Sa Greek uh, method kasi, sinusundan mo yung tutor mo. That's why when you talk about Paul, mayabang si Paul because he was at the seat of Gamaliel. And Gamaliel is the best teacher during his time. At uh, there are two schools kasi sa time ng mga Pharisees. There is the school of Hillel and the school of Shemai. At doon bali, at least from that perspective, dapat alam na kaagad ng mga tao kung ano yung posisyon mo, sa ang school ka ba. So kung sa Pilipinas, Tarayuti ka ba, Teneo, Lasal, mga ganyan mga ano. So that now brings you some sort of authority in saying something dahil nakapag-aral ka. And Jesus Christ does not have anything. Alam natin yon At kaya mababa ang tingin sa Kanya. And also, wala namang ordinasyon nga siya. So that becomes the problem. So, pag tinignan mo to, 
actually there are three questions that are being raised here to trap Jesus. Gusto nila i-trap si Jesus para makikita na maling teacher siya. He is a false teacher. He is a false prophet. Tatlong tanong. So ito yung unang tanong. Whose authority? Whether sasagutin niya ng tao or sasagutin niya na galing sa Diyos, he will be on the wrong answer. Sabi nga natin, sa tatlong tanong, sa tatlong tanong dumb if you do, dumb if you don't. Paano lulusutan ng Panginoon yung mga sagot? So in this, uh, in this instance, ang ginawa niya, okay, he went to the question of John. So si John ang tinanong nila niya, so ano sa tingin niyo? Si John the baptizer, okay? Hindi si John the Presbyterian, okay? Si John the baptizer, or the baptist. Uh, yun yung tanong, uh, so saan galing? Galing ba sa Diyos? Galing sa tao? Hindi rin nag-aaral, wala rin ano, pero may, may, may ano siya. Yung similar sa kay Jesus, may power yung ano niya, yung... Uh, uh, actions niya, mga words niya, at sumusunod yung mga tao sa kanya. That's why they believe really is a prophet. And there is a law in the Torah na pag prophet, pag sinabi mong prophet, eh, hindi prophet, you will be stoned to death. Okay? In similar manner na yung hindi prophet, nagpa-prophet, prophet, eh, stoned to death din yun. That's why they, they, nung tinanong nila yun, they have the big problem. Kasi ang mga tao na nakikinig sa kanila, kilala si John the Baptist. Why? Because John the Baptist, yung ministry ni John the Baptist is in Jerusalem. Andun siya sa River Jordan, which is just in Jerusalem. Along that the line. That's why uh, ang mga uh, leaders and even the Herod, yung mga, uh, mga leaders ng uh, uh, Israel, pamilyar kay, kay John the Baptist because his activities is in Jerusalem. Kaya kilala siya ng mga taga-Jerusalem. So ito yung naging problema ngayon kung paano sasagutin ng mga religious leaders. So they play safe, sabi nila, hindi na pinagahan. E kung hindi nyo rin lang pasagot, hindi ko rin sasagutin yung tanong niya. So makikita natin doon na ano, the way that uh, ano, ang sabi nga eh, sa girian, sa girian, who the, the first person who blinks, lose, loses. Okay? Yung mga bata, ganyan. O sige, titigan tayo. Ganyan. Patigasan ng ano, titig. Kung sino yung magbi-blink, siya talo. So dito makikita natin, the religious leaders blink. Hindi nila masagot. So sabi nila, hindi namin alam. So sabi ng pangin, hindi ko sasabihin sa inyo kung saan galing yung authority ko. So wala silang ma, ma no, wala silang ma sabi doon sa sagot. Because they cannot even answer them, uh, the, 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 the question that they, that be, being asked them. Now, comes here the parable of the wicked tenants. So again, this will be the last parable na ibibigay sa kanila. Um, usual, tatanong ko sa inyo, ano yung mga, uh, ano ang nire-represent? symbolizes yung mga figures na parable. So ito mamaya pag-usapan natin. Reading together begin. And he began to tell the people his parable. A man planted a vineyard and led it out to tenants and went into another country for all the time. And the time came, he sent a servant to the tenants so that they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away and he added it. And he sent to another servant, but they also beat and treated him shamefully, and sent him away empty-handed. And he sent yet a third, his own soul would be wounded and cast out. And the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son, perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Let us kill him, so that the inheritance may be ours. And they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, Surely not, 
But, but he looked directly at them and, and said, said, What then is, the, is which is written? written. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls to anyone, it will crush him. Okay. So, ang unang tanong natin sa parable, sino yung man that planted the vineyard? Sino yung man? <laughs> okay, madali lang to. Okay, so this is a parable, symbolic, figurative question. Sino yung tao na sinabing nagtanim ng vineyard? Okay? Sino? Mame? Uh, God. Ah, God. Okay, so yung Panginoon. Okay. And the vineyard is... The vineyard is... Okay, so the people is the people of God, or should we say, as the gospel would say, the kingdom of God. Okay, so here is God building the kingdom of God, and then he is supposed to have tenants. Sino yung mga tenants niya? Yung nakikitera doon, siya yung papalago ng vineyards. Mga disciples, mga followers of the world. Okay. So, as we can see, the kingdom of God is built, for example, on the people of God, which are the Israelites. So, the Israelites or Israel, the tenants, the leaders of Israel, are the religious leaders of Israel. So, yun yung tenants. Sila yung nagpapalago ng kingdom of God. And then, from time to time, the man that, that owns the vineyard sends servants. Sino yung servants? Mga prophets. So, pag binasa mo to, maalala mo yung uh, yung senior ni um, the first martyr. Sino nga? Stephen. Sa... Uh, sa Acts chapter 7. No? Malala mo yung sinabi niya na padala ng padala yung mga ano, yung Panginoon ng mga prophets yung ginawa daw nila? Pinapatay nila ang lahat ng mga prophets na pinapadala ng Panginoon. That is also the statement of Jesus. Sabi ni Jesus from the yung ano, martyrs na mga prophets, pinapatay nyo mga Pharisees, mga Sadducees, yung mga religious leaders from the time of Abel to the time of Zechariah. So, lahat ang pinapadala ng Panginoon, supposedly mga prophet niya, pinapatay ng mga, supposedly, sila yung magbibuild up ng kingdom ng Panginoon, the people of God, the nation of Israel, led by their religious leaders. So, ito yung mga, ito yung istorya. Padala ng padala ng padala, yun sa man ng uli, pinadala yung anak. So, Ano yung description ng anak? He is the okay, beloved son. So, alam na natin pagka beloved son, may ano, connotation na kagat. So, uh, every time that, Jesus, that God refers to his son, he always says, my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. My father, my son. They have a special relationship because the word or the term that is being used Kaya may son na ginagamit, father and son, because of the relationship of being an heir. Okay? So, in-explain natin yun, mga firstborn son, it's because heir. Sila yung the same nature. Iba yung tena, iba yung miare. They have the same nature. So, the son has the same nature. He is the heir of the father. And what did they do? They killed the son. So, from here, magikita natin na guilty yung mga religious leaders. The way that they will read them and yung magiging reaction nila, they will be coming guilty. Because in Matthew, Mark, Luke, in John, pagpasok pa lang ni Jesus sa Jerusalem, they are already plotting to kill him. So, yun na yung plano nila, papatayin nila during the time. Hindi nila palalagpasin 
na matapos yung festivities ng Jewish festivities which is the Passover, papatayin nila si Jesus. Inunahan na sila ni Jesus. So, in several occasions dito, palaging sinasabi ni Jesus, okay, uh, you will, ano, you will uh, be, uh, destroy this temple and in three days you will build them. So, palaging nire-refer niya sa sarili, papatayin niyo ako. Yun yung plano niyo. So, ito talaga yung ano, sa kanila, outright sinabi sa kanila, you're planning to kill the sun. Okay? So, nung marinig nila ito, and ang um, masama kasi dun sa statement, na sabi niya, ano ngayon ang gagawin ng Ama? He will give the vineyard to others. So, may people of God, the Israelites, ngayon, ngayon i-sisikway sila, or what do you call that? Okay? They will... Sikwai. Um, or say, or, no, disregard. disregard. Okay, disregarded or set aside. Not chosen anymore. God will choose, choose another people. To, mm, so, bali, set aside na siya. Hindi na sila yung people of God. God will now choose another group of people to be, to start the kingdom of God. To build the kingdom of God. <clears throat> so, nung pagsabi nila yon, nagets nila, that's why nagalit sila. They, they, ang sabi nila, surely na. May it never be. Hindi pwede. Na, naintindi ni, na nagets nila, danda, nagigets nila yung parable. Na they are referring to them, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, yung religious leaders. But then, anong sabi conclusion ni Jesus dito? Which is being repeated again and again in the New Testament. Sabi niya, the stones that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Sino yung cornerstone? Si Jesus. So, yung pag reject niya sa akin is clear indication na these things will happen. And uh, this actually... Pag tinignan mo yung sinabi, everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces and when it falls anyone, it will crush him. Ang mga hudyo, meron silang saying na yung bato at saka yung clay or yung clay pot. O, either yung clay pot, babagsak pa ng bato, basag yung clay pot. Yung clay pot, hapasin niya yung bato, basag pa rin yung clay pot. That is the strength of the, of the stone, of the cornerstone. Yung, ano, yung clay pot, which is the uh, religious leaders, are the losers because they rejected the stone and the stone is impregnable, hindi masisira. So that is how this uh, saying is being used. So, So, naging klaro at lalo, lalong nagingit-ngit ngayon yung mga uh, religious leaders. So, gusto nila na before they kill Jesus, kailangan ma dishonor, uh, dishonor muna nila si Jesus. Mawala yung authority ni Jesus sa mga tao, especially being a good teacher, being a, a religious leader. So, dapat pakita nila na mali si Jesus. That's why second question. So, this again, the, the second confrontation. So they sent some, somebody para mag uh, set up ng question. So sabi dito, the scribes and the chief priests sought to lay hands on him at that very hour. Gusto gusto na nilang patay yun. But they perceived that he had told this parable against them. Against them. So they recognized that sila yung tinutukoy but they fear the people. So they sent spies and uh, pretended to be sincere, ito na ngayon yung setup nila. Somebody asked Jesus. So ito yung, Jesus, ang ka-question actually, ang gusto nilang ma-derive na sagot kay Jesus is that Jesus would say na dapat hindi tayo nagbibigay ng taxes. Yun yung in-expect nila na isasagot ni Jesus because Jesus is a, a populist. Ibig sabihin ng populist, 
or mahilig sa popular opinion. And the popular opinion of that time is that they should not pay taxes to Rome. Yun yung kanilang ano, sentiment. At galit na galit sila sa Rome because of those taxes. So, ang tanong sa kanya, simple lang. Is it rightful for us to pay taxes to Caesar? Sabi dito, is it lawful for us to give tribute to Caesar or not? So, dalawang bagay ang uh, point bali. Pag sinabi niya hindi dapat nagbibigay, so, uh, okay na sila. Okay na. Then, we can use that to, sabi nga dito, to report to the governor and to the authority. At sasabihin, si Jesus is a rebel. Rebelde siya. Kasi sinasabihan niya yung mga tao, huwag magbayad ng taxes. But secondly, kung sabi niya, hindi, dapat bumayad kayo, he will now be against the people na gustong gusto siya. Kasi ayaw ng mga tao, sentiment ng tao, ayaw nila magbayad ng taxes. So the way that they, ano, that's why yung mga, yung tatlong tanong na to, tatlo rin na brilliant responses yung binigay ni Jesus. That gives you the kind of wisdom kung sa, sa Old Testament pa, Solomonic wisdom. The wisdom of Solomon. Pero si Solomon, nag-ginaya niya lang si Jesus. I mean, he was only given a glimpse of the wisdom of Jesus. So ito yung wisdom na binigay sa atin. The way that Jesus responded to the question. Itong tawag na dumb if you do, dumb if you don't question. Walang tamang sagot. Talaging mali. Sa politika, ganyan. Magkikita mo yung mga politiko pag tinatanong, usually they are being trapped with the question. At madalas, ang gagawin ng mga politiko, they will not answer. So ang gagawin nila, by and by, yung mga sagot nila, wala dun sa tanong. Okay? So pa palusot lang. But they will not uh, respond to the question directly. So Jesus, ito yung ginawa niya. But he perceived their craftiness and said to them, Show me a denarius. So yung denarius na sa time nila, nandun yung pangalan ni Augusto Caesar. And that actually says, Son of God or, or Lord or God. So yung Caesar, there they refer to him as their God. So, in a way that they are using yung unit, yung monetary system ng mga Romans, is already acknowledging yung authority ni uh, Caesar ng mga Romans. So, ito yung ginamit ni Jesus. Whose likeness and description does it have? They said Caesar. They said to, uh, responded to them, then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God. And they were not able in the presence of the people to catch him in what he said. But marveling at his answer, they became silent. So makikita mo yung wisdom ng sagot niya. Hindi, hindi na sila maka-follow up, na, not even giving follow-up question. Because outright, bluntly, sinasabi niya, Eh, the fact is, you, know, you already recognize the power of Caesar, the authority of Caesar. In fact, you are using his money. So you just return to him whatever he has. Kanda yan eh. Supposed to give it to him. Why not use your own money if you don't uh, accept Caesar? So ganun yung sinasabi ng Panginoon. Any question uh, dito? So, the third one is the resurrection question. So, ano din, this is the last of the questions na itatanong nila after they surrender na sila. Uh, Magkikita nila that the wisdom of Jesus is more than their wisdom combined. Kahit, i, ano pa, kahit anong research pa, kahit pinakamatalino nila cannot uh, respond or cannot equate to the wisdom of God. Oh Jesus. Okay, reading verse 27 together, begin. The eight some sentences, those who deny there is a resurrection, and they ask him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brothers 
eyes, having a wife but no children, no man has to take the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first took a wife and died without children, and the second took the her. And likewise, all seven left and died. After the the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be for the seven of their last wife? Okay? So, yung seven uh, word kanina, seven, did you say abi ni pastor? Okay? So, there is a, uh, an, a, uh, I, that is a unique number that is being used by the Old and the New Testament. Okay? So, dito, uh, medyo, ano, yung exaggerated. O, paano ba mag-asawa ng pito? Ano? Uh, so, there is a law in the Old Testament. Dahil nga, di ba, hinati yung, ano, yung 12 tribes. Hinati nila yung lupa. And then, eventually, they realized na pwede kasi mag-intermarriage yung mga ano, mga Ujo. So, for example, yung sina Ruben, mag-aasawa sila ng Ephraim. Tapos, ang lalaki na taga Ruben na andun yung property ng asawa sa Ephraim, pwede niya kasi atinin yun eh. Kung wala na. Kung wala na, for example, yung, ano, yung mga sa lalaki na side ng babae. So, yun yung, ano, that, that is some of the problems na na nakita nila dun sa portions ng mga lupa ng mga tribes. That's why they made the rule and we saw that even at the time ng uh, Ruth at saka kay Boaz, di ba? They had to keep yung property ng uh, asawa ni Ruth within sa tribe nila which is also part dun si Boaz. Kaya there is the necessity na si Boaz has to be married to Ruth. Kasi to preserve, at saka Boaz is actually to require, is required by law na kailangan maging asawa niya si Ruth because of this principle. So, ang nangyari, naging pito, and so the question is, so, sino ngayon yung magiging asawa niya, husband niya, in the age to come? So Jesus said, reading together again, begin. And Jesus said to them, The sons of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy to attain to that age and to the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage, for they cannot die anymore because they are equal to angels and are sons of God, being the sons of the resurrection. But that the dead are raised, even Moses showed in the passage about the bush, for he calls the Lord the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is not God of the dead, but of the living, for all live in him. Then some of the scribes answered, Teacher, you have spoken well, for they no longer dare to ask him any question. Okay, so ang ina-apply nila ng principle is this age, yung time natin ngayon. So, ang Bible actually, when you read the Bible, the Bible di divides the time frame natin. This age and the age to come. Ano yung age to come? Dalawa nang kasi yung naghahati sa age and the age to come is similar sa paghati sa pagdating ni Jesus. Di ba pagdating ni Jesus, before He came and after He came? ano tawag natin to? Before Christ and after Christ, tawag natin in the year of the Lord or Anno Domini. So, B.C. A.D. Ganun yung paghati sa ating time. Okay? So, ganun din yung paghati actually in the perspective of eschatology. In the future things na tumitingin yung mga Udyo, yung Bible, dalawa lang yung age. This age and the age to come. Okay? Wala nang ibang age, dalawa lang. That's why when you read, for example, in some uh, portions of scripture, sa so Luke chapter 18, nung tinignan natin ito, who will not receive many times more in this time, or in this age, and in the age to come, eternal life. 
referring to another parable. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20, kanina, in mga text natin, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all the rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the one to come. So, ganun yung reference. And iba yung principles ng this age and the age to come. So, iba yung pamamaraan ng ating pamumuhay. In fact, uh, that's why we have the heavens and the earth. Ito yon yung age na to. And the new heavens and the new earth. So, yun yung age to come. Going back to, the, to this uh, text. So, ang sinasabi ng, uh, ano, ng Panginoon, sabi niya, during the time for the age to come, wala na yung asa-asawa. The relationship of marriage is not being uh, re re recognized in the age to come. So, pagdating ng Panginoon, wala na yung asa-asawa. Wala na yung mga anak, wala na yung ganong relationships. Iba na yung relationships doon sa, uh, sa, we call it langit. Pero we should be saying new heavens and new earth. That's actually the new, the new thing, the new age. <clears throat> and the resurrection of the dead, neither marry or are given to marriage. Ibig sabihin, hindi na nagpo-propagate, hindi na nagkakaroon ng anak umaanak. Okay? Doon sa age to come. Being sons of the resurrection. So, ang mga angels also on the age to come, ganun din. They also do not propagate na nagkakaroon ng mga anak. That's why we have to recognize yung father and son relationship. Kasi we have always to go back. So, the way that this, uh, no, that these words na ginagamit sa Panginoon mismo, the Trinity, bakit Father and Son? Okay, because it, it bears relationship, special relationship. It, not, it is not about propagation. Because the term actually, in the new age to come, okay, wala na siyang value, Father and Son. Okay, we only ha appreciate that in this age, but in the age to come, di na natin maaari yun. Because we don't have, no, we no longer have father and son. Okay? Hindi na tayo magkakaroon ng sons. Hindi na ako magiging father. Hindi na kayo magiging mother. So that's a special relationship related dun sa being the heir. Ano ba tayo? Ano ba ito? May comment lang ba ako, Kuya, dyan? Sana Ang sinasabi ko dyan na yung wala ng relationship in the new heavens, mga ganyan-ganyan. Kasi minsan sa terms natin, kung may mga, di ba, mga naman tayo sa na mga kamakanak, nasabi, ah, kung kita-kita tayo kung sa langit at doon, <laughs> di ba, magkapilala tayo bilang yan, mga, di ba, mga ganang mga statement. That's why ang langit actually is focus on Christ. Now, uh, ang recognition, Pag uh, tinignan natin, binigyan kasi tayo ng hinte, no recognition. Do we recognize each other dun sa new heavens and new earth? Of course. Because even sa time nung yung resurrection body mismo, something unique about the resurrection body is that there is immediately a recognition Nare-recognize po. That's why the, the, the disciples, even though they have not seen uh, Isaiah, they have not seen Moses, and yet nung uh, transfiguration, they immediately recognize, ah, yan, si Moses yan. Ah, yan, si Isaiah yan. So, nakikita natin yung, ano, yung picture. Even in the Old Testament, makikita natin that even yung, ano, yung, yung the, uh, the witch of indoor no makita niya si Samuel immediately na recognize niya oh you are ano uh, si Samuel to totoong Samuel tong lumabas na to so there is immediate recognition doon sa resurrected body or sa body 
in the age to come. So ganun din yung ano, that, that, that basically is the principle that we will find. Okay. Pero uh, sa Bible, klaro-klaro na hindi. Hindi lahat ng, kung pag nasa langit na tayo pa sa inyo, heaven or new earth, hindi lahat ng bagay ay maaalala natin. Hindi lahat. Kasi, once na nandun ka na sa langit, pag naalala mo yung, sa langit, ano ba ang nasa langit, sabi sa Bible, puro kasi yan lang, wala nang kalungguta, di ba? No more tears. Ngayon, kung maaalala mo lahat, may may ma-recognize mga maaalala mo siguro yung mga magandang bagay mo ano pero yung mga kalungkutan mga mahal mo sa buhay na hindi pumunta hindi nakapunta sa langit sa imperno tingin ko buburain ng Panginoon yun kasi napaklaro sa Bible na wala nang kalungkutan yun ngayon kung maaalala mo yun malulungkot ka 100% di ba? malulungkot ka kasi ay andun yung papa ko andun yung asawa ko andun yung anak ko so hindi totoo yung nakasulat sa Bible na walang wala nang kalungkutan sa langit. Buburay na hindi siya. Kaya ang angkwan, hindi lahat. Mahalala mo. Tama yung sabi niyo kaya Ben, marirecognize natin, mag-ano natin. Pero hindi lahat kasi 100% na buburay niyo ng Panginoon ng mga masamang alaala or hindi, mag- hindi magagandang uh, alaala. Puro na lang uh, ma- magagandang bagay ang, ang ibibigay sa atin ng Panginoon doon. Sapagkat, uh, lang para sa Bible na walang kalungkutan sa langit. Kasi kung yung asawa mo, mahal mo sa buhay, maalala mo, hindi ka magiging masaya doon. Yun ang para sa Bible. Kaya, tama. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, then, siguro after na siguro yun, Mark, i- Oh, after after ang ang ibig sabihin ni Mark, after na i-wipe ng Panginoon. Kasi ang sa Revelation 21, sabi niya, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So siguro, after na i-wipe ng Panginoon ang tears mo, na naalala mo na yung mga mag-anak mo, and then after that, then you will enjoy forever continually. Basahin mo nga buhay yung pastor. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So this is now the first, this is now the new heaven and new earth. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So, ibig sabihin, one feeling na lang. One feeling. Probably, iiyak ka dahil maalala mo yung mga kamag-anak mo na sa impero. But after that, pag wipe ni Jesus sa tears mo, wala na. You will forget everything. And you will enjoy Him forever. Because, we are in heaven. Ibig sabihin, uh, di ba, in heaven, new earth, new heaven. So, kumbaga, perfect na ang lahat na nandun. So, we will feel the perfect love, di ba? So, kung siguro yung relationship natin sa isa't isa, magiging agapi love na siya. So, ibig sabihin ni Mark, siguro, after nang after noon, na maalala mo, after that, pagpasok mo talaga sa New Heaven, wala na. Wala. Hindi mo na maalala. Kaya nga, kami ko pag nasa langit ka na. Kasi kung maalala mo, 100% hindi po pwede maalala mo pa yung mga. May maalala ka, pero hindi sa kagaya ng sabi ni Gabin, mag-nice mo siya, kita kayo din sa langit. Uy, pastor, pero hindi, siguro hindi mo na maalala yung asawa mo, ano mo. Gusto na maalala yung ex niya. Sa ilin, gusto pa niya maalala daw. So actually, we are practicing it now actually. Kasi yung asawa natin, we can call him sister. Brothers. So, yan na siguro relationship natin sa langit. Kahit asawa natin, tawagin na natin nga, Oy, sister, andito ka na. <laughs> Oy, brother, andito ka na. Para mga chai, di ba? Kasi yung mga anak natin, brother, din natin yan in the Lord. Eh. Oh, no, alam mo naman, alam mo naman, asawa mo siya, pero wala nang contact, wala nang ano doon, iba na eh. Kapatid, But in reality na, talaga, mag-brother naman kami ni Ningning, probably siya, brother kami in the Lord. Pero in the flesh, we are husband and wife. Yes. But in the Lord, we are brothers Wala and sisters. Wala na yung flesh eh, kaya hanggang na rin yung last time. So, hindi mo nga talaga siya maalala sa langit na, ah, dati ko siya masawa. Siguro, ah, 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 ah,
kan mungkin dia mau sehingga ini pembelinya marik ugnais mau ang tanyanya kan, pero ini selinga ini punya mana yang memang berasa, punya mana ada kemarin, 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 Tama, hindi kasi natin alam kasi we are only confined with the revelation exactly, from yeah. God kung gano. and the, the, the age to come is very limited hindi natin alam kung ano yung magiging structure ulit na so we will have to be there for us to understand it. so but so far ganon uh, kailangan maintindihan natin for example marriage is only bound here on this uh, age so uh, relationships Uh, relatives, sons. Uh, that's why ang, ang foremost tayo sa atin, for example, wala tayong asawa, o husband, wife, children. So, they, these are matters that is being concerned sa age natin, but not in the age to come. But if we serve the Lord here now, those are matters that will also be concerned in the age to come. Kasi doon talaga yun yung ano eh, prelude lang dito eh, nagpa-practice lang tayo. But there talagang yun, that's the point where we really perfectly glorify and worship and serve our Lord. Yung, we have to understand na yung pag-service, worship, hindi tayo kanta lang ng kanta doon, sayaw ng sayaw, or may ikot-ikot doon sa, no, that's not how the Bible describes it eh. Because the description of the Bible is somewhat like going back to the Garden of Eden, to God, going back to the Garden Paradise, and then we again in this new heavens and new earth, parang babalik ulit as supervisors tayo. We supervise the creation, the new creation. Tawag ng Bible is new creation, so we go back to that point. So that is something that we have to look forward to sa ating mga, uh, the blessed hope that we have, the the blessed resurrection. But when we so, have kasi sa passage ko yan ang sabi dyan, no? where he calls the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Probably isang father lang ang kanilang pagtingin sa God and si Abraham, sa Isaac and Jacob are all brothers. Siguro ito doon. And that's, I don't know. Kasi sabi ng sabi ng passage where he calls the Lord God of Abraham God of Isaac. Parang wala nang relationship si Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Eh. They don't have any relationship. Uh, the only thing na sinabi diyan is the the God they, are, they have only one God but they are the same, they are equal. They are not Abraham is not the father of Isaac and Isaac is not the father of Jacob. Eh. The emphasis bali dun sa sagot ng Panginoon is the, the, the differentiation between the dead and the living. So ang focus kasi ng mga seduces, yung death, yung namatay. Ang sabi ni Jesus, actually, they're not dead. They are living because God is the God of the living. Yung God of the dead, yun yung dinidiyos nila si Hades, God of the dead. Pero hindi ganun yung Diyos natin. He is God of the living. Ibig sabihin, we only, from the, this age, we trans, transfer or translate to the age to come, which is still living. Yung life ngayon, tawag natin life, ang susunod na life, ano tawag ni Jesus? Eternal life. So, yun lang yung ano, yun yung ano, we, there is just a transition from this age to the age to come, but still we continue to live. So, ang but mga, the principles ang, are different. Ang mga kapatid natin sa Panginoon is still living po yan, no? yung namamatay lang ng mga Christians. Mm. So, they go to the age to come and still alive. 
mm. right now. Yeah. Uh, so, yan yung palaging tanong ko sa mga matatalinong pastor kasi yung transitory, yung the transient uh, time. Uh, anong ginagawa ng mga tao ngayon uh, between the their death sa pagkamatay until the second coming of Jesus Christ and the new heavens in the new earth. So, anong sagot nyo ako yan? Uh, hindi ko parang maintindihan. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi anong pinagawa nila ngayon dun eh? Kasi pumasok sila sa another another age of eternal life. So, mm. what are they doing now? Mm. Kasi ang sabi dyan, they are living, they are still alive. Mm. Hindi sila patay. Mm. They, they continue. Uh, continue. In the, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's uh, actually another uh, yeah. view. Yung uh, sleep, uh, ano tawag dyan. Are you in conscious or conscious of sleeping or when you wake, you awake with the second coming of Jesus Christ? Anyway, in the, in the part ng discussion natin. So just the last body, uh, ang question medyo late tayo. No? Sige lang, kailangan kong matapos kasi itong... Uh, Okay. So the the last question bali again sabi nga sila nga yung nagbigay ng tanong ngayon this is the time na si Jesus naman ang nagtanong. And these are the classic questions. Dahil this this issue is the same issue at up to this time. Who is Jesus? Who is the Christ? Who is the Messiah? So si Jesus nga yung nagtanong sa kanila. Okay, ako naman yung magtatanong. How can you say that the Christ is David's son? Sabi nyo, si ang Messiah ay anak ni David. Kaya palagi kayo sumisigaw, sumisiga, blessed is he who is coming, the son of David. Tapos, ang sabi niya, kinote niya yung uh, Psalm 110, but the, the Psalm 110 says, David himself says in the book of Psalms, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. David does calls him Lord. So how is he his son? Paano naging anak ni David, yung Messiah, when he calls the Messiah his Lord? And yung context ng Lord Bale is, ang uh, context ng Psalm 110, the Messiah is God that the Messiah is also himself God. So pag binasa mo yung Psalm 110 sa Lexham, so ganito yung pagsabi, uh, the declaration of Yahweh to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Yahweh will send out your mighty scepter from Zion, rule out, rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people will volunteer in the day of your power, in holy splendor from the womb of the dawn. You will have the dew of your youth. Yahweh shall, has sworn, and he will not change his mind. You are a priest forever, according to the manner of Melchizedek. O Lord, at your right hand he will shatter kings in the days of his anger. He will judge among the nations. He will fill them with corpses. He will shatter the rulers of many countries. He will drink from the stream of, by the road. Therefore, he will lift up his head. So, um, Psalm 110 is recognized by no mga hudyo, that this is a messianic psalm. And this psalm actually exalts the Messiah on the level equal to the to God. So sabi niya, how can you say that David is just the son of, uh, the Messiah is just the son of David when the Messiah himself is being worshipped by David? So yun yung tanong niya, which the Jews cannot answer. So pag binasa mo to, there is no response from the Jews. But that already gives you a hint Kasi palagi nilang tinatanong, who are you? What are you? Ang sabi niya nga, what is your authority? Dito niya sinabi kung ano yung authority niya. 
His authority is that He is the fulfillment of the Messianic prophecies in the Old Testament, wherein He is has the power of God Himself. That He is recognized as God Himself, but by King David Himself. So ito yung, uh, ito yung pinaka point na uh, kinlaim na ni Jesus yung pagiging misaya si uh, misaya niya and his nature na medyo patago kasi it's a form of a question pero sasagutin niya to sa Luke chapter 22 actually when he responds kung sino siya sabi niya I'm the Messiah and I sit at the right hand of God in power referring to Daniel chapter 7 as the son of man so dito muna tayo just because this is the end of uh, Luke chapter 20. So, natapos siya uh, ang Luke chapter 20 sa discussion nila with the end question, ang tanong, who is Jesus? And who is the Messiah who is called the son of David? So, nagbigay sa kanila ng mas malalim na, tan na, ta uh, na pag-iisip para pag-isipan nila kung ano yung nature ng Messiah, yung person niya ba? Okay? Pag may tanong pa kayo, hindi na natin sasagutin dahil gutom na tayo. Okay? Shall we pray? Reserve na lang na next uh, time, next Sunday. Our Lord and Gracious Father, we praise you and thank you Lord for this time that we could study your word in uh, Luke chapter 20. We pray Lord that uh, we really appreciate the wisdom of Jesus and uh, his nature and person. We pray, Lord, that uh, this will be applied in our hearts and applied in our daily living. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Yeah.